Well, saying that there's a standard shareholders agreement is the same thing as saying that we all love to wear Uniqlo black shirts, and I don't. So there's no such thing as a standard shareholders agreement. What is a shareholders agreement and what do you need to know as a startup? My name is Rachel and I'm a startup lawyer. In this video, we'll be covering two common questions from startups on shareholders agreement and three common elements of a startup SHA. The first common question that we get is whether there is such a thing as a standard shareholders agreement. Well, saying that there's a standard shareholders agreement is the same thing as saying that we all love to wear Uniqlo black shirts, and I don't. So there's no such thing as a standard shareholders agreement. Why? Because a shareholders agreement that is geared towards the startup, which would be continuously fundraising, would look very different from a shareholders agreement that is geared towards a small medium enterprise, where the share capital is rather fixed. The second common question that we get is, when does a startup need a shareholders agreement? There is no right or wrong answer to this, but in my opinion, a startup should have a shareholders agreement once an investor gets issued shares. Next up, we'll be covering three key elements in a startup shareholders agreement, namely board matters, share capital matters, and startup specific issues in a shareholders agreement. On board matters, a company is like a human. It has a brain, aka the board of directors, and it has a heart, aka the shareholders. The board composition in your shareholders agreement is very important and in the early stages of your company, the founder should try to maintain a semblance of control over your company because as you move on down your fundraising chain, it is likely that you lose more and more control of your company. Here is some food for thought. First, should an investor be given a board seat or an observer seat? Two, should the investor's board seat be tagged to a shareholding percentage? And three, what board reserve matters should there be? The reality is that every document will look different and startups with stronger traction would be able to negotiate stronger terms. The second thing we'll be covering is share capital matters. Broadly speaking, there are two things that you like to think about. Number one, share issuances. And number two, share transfers. On the first topic of share issuances, there are two main ways a startup can raise funds, through equity financing or debt financing. And when we're talking about equity financing, it refers to the issuances of shares by the startup in order to raise capital from potential investors. From this perspective, you'd like to reduce the number of roadblocks that prevents you from raising funds through the issuances of new shares. The second thing that you wish to consider is share transfers. Otherwise known as secondary share sales, there are three perspectives that you want to consider. The first is that of the investor, the second is that of the founder, and the third is that of the company. Third, there will also be certain startup specific terms which you may not find in other shareholders agreement. First, founder lever terms. A startup shareholders agreement would typically contain good lever or bad lever mechanisms to govern the terms that a founder can lead the company. Exit terms. Most VC funds and angels invest with a view to exit with very high returns. From that perspective, exit provisions become really important to them, either in the form of an IPO, trade sale, or asset sale. And this is perhaps very different from an SME shareholders agreement of a company that is highly dividend paying. Finally, there would likely be restrictive covenants in a startup shareholders agreement that would restrict a founder from setting up a competitive business after they leave. This is very similar to what we'll see in private equity documentation. There will be a bunch of things for startup founders to consider when entering into a shareholders agreement, including the robustness of information right and how a lot of these terms could translate into operational efficiencies or inefficiencies. And let's create a more founder-friendly startup environment. <laughs> Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or feedback, feel free to let us know, including my makeup. And until then, see you, take care, and remember to go for a holiday.